Hello. Digital 8 camcorders are still very useful for playback of digital and, in most cases, analog video 8 and high 8 tapes. And they can digitize them directly through the firewire port. Very useful. But this one isn't working. Why is that? Well, let's start with checking the power supply. Here's a power supply brick. I have a replacement, a spare. Let's try that. Aha! So the fault is not in the camcorder, it's in the power supply. Let's uh, have a look at that then. There's an indent here, and that's where the screw is. So let's peel back the label and get inside. Okay, so in there is, I think it's a tamper proof screw. Let's have a look. Yes, that's some sort of uh, tamper resistant screw. Let's see if I've uh, got the right bit for it. Yes, that seems about right, and it's marked up. Uh, T10H. Is there another one? Yes, there's another one in there. And one more, I think. Okay. Now, much the most common fault I've found on these in the past is the soldering breaks up on the input socket though I don't think that's the case this time let's have a closer look now there's no significant dry joints there I will resolder them anyway just to cover it off but it looks like today the fault may lie somewhere else right, and all of the soldering around the input filters uh, and choke and capacitors and stuff all looks a little crystal, uh, crystalline but um, I'm not seeing any smoking guns for this device having failed. Get a meter and look at the output voltage when it's powered up. Okay I'm on the output terminals and we're about to power up. I should say this is an isolated transformer, it is not raw mains. And we're seeing a very unstable voltage, 6 and 7 volts, but it is all over the place. That's unusual. Let's look at this uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. It looks physically okay, but it could still be dead. Okay, I may have mentioned once or twice before that this is my ESR60 um, ESR capacitance measurement with a, a remote control foot switch operation, which is so handy for this sort of thing. Now the capacitor is 1000 microfarads, but there may be other capacitors such as this one at least partly in series with it, so what value we read may not be exactly 1000. That looks fine. And it's Rubicon, so it's decent. So I'm reading, I think that's reading the 1000 plus the 470 and their connection between them is this resistor, might be a, uh, a fusible resistor and there's chokes and other bits on the output there. So uh, the fault lies somewhere else probably. What an unusual state of affairs. Let's check the, uh, the main capacitor here, 400 volt 47 microfarad relatively unusual for those to fail but I did have one go in a printer recently. Before I make the measurement I'll just check for any voltage on that capacitor. No. Here he goes. A little low at about 42 microfarads but I don't think that's low enough to stop the unit from working. 47 microfarad capacitor here. I'm not sure what that does in the circuit. Maybe to do with the startup supply or something, so it might not be that relevant. I'm not reading great. Make that measurement again. No, that really doesn't look very good, does it? Okay, well, we'll take that one out. A reason that I often like to test them on the board if I can 
uh, is that when you take a capacitor off, the very heat of soldering it can affect its performance, and sometimes it'll reform a bad capacitor. But uh, let's have a just double check of this 47 microfarad. No, that is toast. So uh, let's replace it. Right, I have a 47, 35 volt, uh, high temperature, low ESR capacitor. That's much better. Put that in. Okay, we're ready to try again. I would be pleasantly surprised if that has made a difference, but let's try it. No, it's still all over the place. Got the uh, terminals the wrong way around. And it's still oscillating with the power switched off. Isn't that odd? Should I put an oscilloscope on that and have a look at that waveform? Okay, let's have a look at it uh, on a scope. Oh, it's quite a low frequency bouncing around. Oh, look at that! When I switch off the uh, power, it continues. So having looked at the oscilloscope uh, waveform, we can eliminate quite a lot of the circuitry. So looking at it here, we've got the mains input, um, and various filtering. Uh, we do a full bridge rectifier there and that feeds the primary uh, smoothing capacitor. And then there's a chopper transistor here and that drives this transformer. Then we have a rectifier. There's a slightly odd arrangement for the rectifier. These two diodes are actually connected together so there's a wire link on the outside of these two pins. Uh, so these are connected in um, parallel. Then that goes through some filter capacitors and inductors and a fusible resistor and more inductors through to the output. And on the other side we have uh, a control IC which is sending uh, a signal back via this opto isolator back to the primary side to control the chopping. That's as I understand it. But then I don't really have a brain like Diode Gone Wild or BigClive.com and this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. So what we can say is because we saw that even when it was powered down we had a slow fall in the voltage that the input side was all working, that the high voltage was uh, on the first capacitor here, that the chopper must have been working and the transformer oscillating and the rectifier and all would have been generating voltage. The problem must lie in the feedback circuit, uh, which would be to do with this IC, there's a transistor there, some uh, passive components and the opto isolator itself. Uh, there's also an IC here uh, and a few other components. There's a diode and, and there's another diode hiding in there as well, which I've tested. So we know that the problem is not caused by a capacitor because the only bad capacitor there has already been changed. Uh, we must have a fault somewhere deep in the electronics here for which we do not have schematics and it would take an age to uh, reverse engineer all of this sort of thing. In fact, it's probably almost impossible. So I am somewhat at a loss. Also bear in mind that these are not particularly valuable. Uh, if I need to get hold of another one of these, they do turn up on eBay and similar where people have had camcorders that have died. So I think we've come to the end of how far we can go with this, which is a pity. Uh, you know, we'd covered the things that usually fail, which is that obviously that capacitor had failed for us today. And I've on several occasions seen dry joints here on the uh, input side of the power socket on these. So um, it uh, didn't quite work out as I'd hoped. So I can only apologise. 
I'm clearly not as good as I hoped I'd be at uh, this kind of circuitry. Uh, I've been defeated by a simple little power supply. And you may remember I was defeated a little while ago by a power supply on a TV. This was a TV I was working on uh, some months ago, and uh, it's a Samsung, and that had a strange fault in the power supply. And again, there were no schematics because it was treated as a replaceable component. So uh, I didn't get to the bottom of that one, even though I'd replaced a defective part on it. This seems to be the way somewhat with switch mode power supplies. Never mind, at least I did fix that one in the inkjet printer, if you remember, a little while ago, an Epson inkjet printer, where the, uh, quite unusually, this capacitor, the first capacitor there, had dried up, and that blew up the chopper transistor. Now, uh, hopefully I'll be a bit more successful in future, so do come by and watch me work on other audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>